Welcome in YouTube family. Today I want to share with you a topic, two words, wire restriction, and how it could be the only thing standing in your way from making a nice crispy weld. Now there are a number of ways that you can get restricted wire when it comes to a wire fed process. We're talking MIG, flux core, dual shield flux core, it doesn't matter if it's steel, stainless steel, aluminum, it doesn't matter. You can get these same wire restriction problems uh, from any of those. Could be that you might have the tension set wrong on the actual roller here. It might be too tight and it's not letting that wire come out. You've got wire restriction. Or maybe it's something to do with your drive roll systems. You don't have it tight enough or they're loose enough and it caused some sort of wire Wire restriction. You might have just a big loop in your line and believe it or not that loop could cause wire restriction. Doesn't matter what you do if you adjust your voltage, your wire feed speed to no avail, you still got this weld that you can't make perfect. Like I said, it could be some drive roll issues but the one biggest issue that I always see that welders usually don't check is that liner. Now what even is a liner and where do you find it? Well the liner is what runs along the inside of this MIG gun. I don't know if y'all remember back to the flux core video where I actually forgot to install the liner in this before running wire through it. Ooh, ooh, it tried. It didn't make it very far. Yeah, that video. All that wire just piled up on the inside of it without that liner which directs it where to go. Now depending on what you're trying to weld and what MIG gun you have will be the style of liner that you get. Now if you're running steel and stainless steel you're probably going to have a steel liner. If you want to run aluminum and stuff like that you can use a Teflon liner. They all still are kind of brand specific. Now I'm using an Abbey MIG. You can kind of see it if you take this diffuser off. It's that little metal piece sticking out the end there. It kind of looks like a spring a little bit. It helps feed the wire through. Depending again what size of wire you're using and what type, you're going to need to buy the right liner. Why would these liners go bad? Just wear and tear over time. They can kind of get worn out or get full of crud and dirt and dust. I mean that wire running through it is kind of rubbing against all those little grooves and it will eventually, especially if you're running nasty wire, get really dirty. So taking care of it, putting some wire cleaners on there will help mitigate that from happening. You can leave wire in there if you don't use the gun long enough. Say you set this out for a long time so off to the side with wire in it, that liner could rust. Another reason why you might do it is it's been damaged somehow. It's been stepped on, it's been looped up and kinked and pulled too tight. Someone's run over it with a freaking forklift. Something has happened that that liner has been crushed or kinked. Kinked is usually the problem that I usually find to be uh, one of the reasons why I would replace a liner. That's what happened to this one. I can actually see the kink in it. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to replace one of these. Now the biggest reason why I even made this video is because I don't think a lot of people even know that these are supposed to be kind of considered consumables. Now if you take care of them, they'll last a lot longer. So just keep that in mind. If you go to any end of a MIG gun, you'll see some form or fashion of it holding the liner in place. In this case, the Abbey MIG guns, they have this little retention cap there at the back of it. You could take that off and you'll have no problems. Other MIG guns might have a little retention screw on the side. That's what I've often seen too. Loosen that set screw and you'll be able to pull that wire out. So now that that retention screw is out, you can pretty much pull it out. The easiest way to pull out a liner is making sure your gun is straight. And then you should be able to yank it out. Yeah, see I had some loops in it. Really hard to get out. And then you'll notice this little brass piece here. We can just pop it right out. And then it just pulls, just pulls right out. Just as I thought. There's the culprit, the kink, and the liner. Now you can imagine that MIG wire running through there, it's gonna hit a sharp edge. It's gonna cause some restriction. If you notice a kink in your liner, it's time to replace it. And here's our steel liner. When you're running flux core, dual shield flux core, carbon steel, you pretty much wanna have a steel liner. Now if you're running stainless steel, it's probably not a great idea if you're working in a really particular shop to have the same liner in the MIG gun. You might need a whole separate setup. But this is your liner. You can get these at pretty much any distribution shop like your local air gas and stuff like that. I try to avoid going on Amazon to buying liners because you just never know if it's going to fit by the time you get it or if it's for your machine or for the right MIG gun. It usually comes really tightly coiled and again we don't want to damage this right out of the bag so we don't want to kink it. I usually just grab one side and I usually don't try to pull or tug on it just so like it doesn't get too kinked. Now you might think it's a little silly that there's a right and wrong way to put a liner in, but trust me. I don't know if y'all remember the video we did at RMS Welding Systems, but when I used to work there for like two weeks, they made me put together so many freaking MIG guns. So when it comes to putting in your liner, 
you have the gun completely straight. The straighter it is, the easier it's gonna be for you to feed this through. If you have a loop in it, you're probably gonna be pushing too hard and that's gonna give you more chance to kink it as you're pushing through. And again, we don't wanna ruin this thing. So we'll just go ahead and take the end that doesn't have the nut in it and just gently feed it in. Now I know this is gonna sound a little suggestive, but we don't wanna long stroke it, okay? I know that looks like it's more efficient, but if you go too fast, you can push and then you can kink it. Short, happy little strokes. And almost every time it's gonna start to get to the end and get a little tight. A little wiggle and a little shuffle and you'll be able to get that on there. Not all MIG guns are gonna have this little bit left over. Abacor Benzel makes MIG guns that fit all my machines. That's why I use them, because they're kind of versatile. But it has this little extra bit in case the machine has an adapter that needs it to go a little bit longer. If it doesn't, then we just trim it. And believe it or not, there's a proper way to trim your liner. Now, if you've never replaced a MIG liner before, you're probably a little confused at this point. And for good reason, you've never done it before. These all have different lengths to them. You're gonna end up trimming your liner every single time. This ESOB machine comes with this adapter, right? And you'll notice that this sticks out quite a bit. Whereas my Everlast machine, I would just cut this completely flush and make sure it's nice and clean, no burrs or anything for that wire to get a hold of so I can just screw it right into the front of my Everlast. It's my ESOB, I need this adapter piece. So what I'll end up doing is just tighten down this retention nut all the way, then I can slide on my adapter and screw it in just like if it were in the machine. You wanna make sure it's all the way threaded in. You can see how much extra you have, and it's that simple. Just like if you would if it fit the machine, you can trim it just flush. That's not exactly flush, so what I'll usually do is I'll even take, believe it or not, an angle grinder and just keep that nice and clean, or even a drill bit, just to make sure that there's no burr on the inside. Now they make deburring tools specifically for this stuff, but I'll usually just take a drill bit. I just want it to sit just bigger than it because I just want to put a little taper on it. Or even just a little angle grinder and flatten that spot so it's not that little hook. I did take my taper off. And that's what we want it to look like. So now that we've got it secured at the back end where it needs to be, we want to tighten down our diffuser how we would want it. And you want to make sure you fit this with everything tightened properly. This little guy here, this contact tip, is going to sit down about to this point. Now you know about where you need to cut it on the inside because this liner can't be right up against it. It won't work, it won't let that contact tip go in there. If you've ever noticed you're trying to feed your wire through your gun at the start of a day or whatever it may be, and you always hit something right before it goes through and you have to take your contact tip off, it's probably because you didn't trim your liner properly. So we'll just kind of use my thumb as a marker Get my cutters close and cut it. Just be confident. Take our grinder. So now we've got that liner out. Screw our diffuser on. I cut that thing too far back. That stinks. I would normally wanna see that sucker where those holes are in that diffuser. I'd wanna see it right there. It's not the end of the world. But it's not the best case Ontario. Yeah, you can kind of see I cut it too short the way that liner comes up. It's like sticking up like that where if I had it towards that contact tip, you'll have a direct contact here. We'll see if I can make it do the bumping sound that I was talking about since I didn't put it in right. If you put it in right, you'll be able to run that thing without taking a freaking contact tip off. I also want to make sure you got no loops in it. See if it make that bump. Y'all can hear it on the mic probably. Oh yeah, still went right out the tippity tip. Good deal. I mean, like I said, it's not the end of the world. It's just the little things that keep that wire restriction at bay. Depending on what you're welding is the type of liner you're gonna wanna run. This liner's not bad that I'm pulling out of here, so I'm gonna wanna properly store it. I don't want it to be in a wet environment. I'd like it to be reusable. But if I wanted to ever want run some aluminum, I might switch to one of these Teflon liners. The biggest difference, again, is it's a different material. You never wanna be running these Teflon liners with steel. Why wouldn't you wanna do that? Well, you probably could get away with it if everything really was stretched out properly, but if it's not, that wire can go right through the Teflon. If you leave this in there, or if you didn't have a liner in there at all, a steel piece of wire clipped with a sharp pair of pliers, and there's like a little turn in it, it'll just <laughs> right through the side of your MIG gun. If you have one of those springy steel liners and you try to run aluminum through it, it's gonna get hung up, it's too soft and it's gonna end up breaking. The biggest thing is just no one teaches you this stuff. If this helped anyone, let me know. I'd really like to know. Also, don't forget to check out the description. Down below, we've got a lot of partners like Abacor Benzel, Outlaw Leather, Cayman Gloves. They've got good deals, rebates, or just cool information on where to find some of their stuff. Appreciate you all for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next weld. Putting it
it in there just where it would go to line up. Oops. Cut, cut. What the hell, cut. Gentle. It's not gentle. Let me grab some safety glasses. Somewhere. I got these glasses. Oh, they're on my head. Eureka! 